Matanuska Susitna was a city Sahin Claire never imagined could exist. In the midst of tall trees and fields of green and blooming flowers sat a gleaming golden glass and brick city. She learned that millennia ago it was called Seward Success, named after one of the modern explorers of the great Northland, then called Alaska. The original idea was to create a glass-enclosed city. But over the millennia, with earthquakes and changes in land surface and geography, Matanuska Susitna retained a perfect climate and temperature. It seldom got colder than 35 degrees or hotter than 70 degrees. The beautiful buildings, the exquisite food, and colorful plants were alluring and inviting. But Sahin Clare knew this was not the home of the story holder. This area was consumed with comfort, civility, and commercialism. Sahin Clare knew she had to go farther north. She learned of a place called Denali City that surrounded the highest peak of the same name, nearly in the center of the Northland. While in Matanuska Susitna, she found the best places to buy coats, boots, and gear she needed for traveling into the colder parts of the Northland. Many companies offered trips to Denali City. She chose one that was least tourist-oriented and offered the best price for her resources. They traveled in an airship. The small oblong vehicles were inspired by the obsolete dirigibles of the 20th century. After the destruction and limits on technology, innovative scientists figured out how to harness natural air to power small ships that flew without threat of exploding. They were called Denali dirigibles because the engineers who first built them lived in Denali City. Sahin Claire smiled. She remembered Sanctuary's energy and lights came from natural electric earth energy. So she was glad the surface had found ways of using natural energy. She looked out the window and watched the changing landscape below. Soon the glowing city disappeared and small specks of isolated houses and farms disappeared into a gleaming white landscape with patches of towering trees. The ship flew so close to the Denali mountain range, Sahin Clare could see the crystal designs of the snow. Cold air hit her face as she left the ship. Tears filled her eyes and she breathed deeply. She was happy to get into a warm trolley that swiftly carried her into the glowing lights of Denali City, curving around a large lake beneath towering mountains. Even though a clear, weather-resistant tent covered large parts of the city, Sahin Claire always kept her coat on. She found a small, quiet hotel and spent a month sitting in silence, seeking guidance to find the story holder. She had no idea where she was supposed to go. One evening, she sat in a restaurant, listening for a key. Clearly, as if the person was talking to her, she heard the voice of a woman, mature and strong. I know you don't want to hear me. I know every scientist and politician says it's not true, but there is a place called Arctic City, and I know it's up there between Kotzebue and Barrow but it's covered by an invisible, impenetrable dome. The old man, yes, he was a direct descendant of the Inupiat. He told me about it. He said only people of a highly attuned spiritual consciousness can enter that city. It's a protected place. He said it keeps the balance on this planet and protects life so Earth won't ever again experience a great destruction. He said he had a relative who went there, and he's never seen her since. But he can't get in because he's got blood on his hands. He killed Moose. Then Sahin Clare knew Arctic City was her destination. The airship carried her to the end of its line, Yukon Town, where she hired a sled driver with dogs able to pull her and a supply of food, water, and two tents. She found her driver at the Inupiat Services Center. His name was Kayana, and he said he could trace his lineage back to the 19th century. 
Sahin Clare looked into his clear, slightly slanted brown eyes, smiling in his brown face, and knew his heritage was true. They set out at sunrise on a cool, sunny day.